Welcome back, I'm Peter Millard and in today's video I want to talk about these little fellas, concealed hinges. In fact, let's dive right in. Uh, call them kitchen cabinet hinges, call them cup hinges, call them Euro style hinges. We call them concealed hinges because when the door's closed you don't see them. So in the best part of 20 years as a cabinet maker I've fitted thousands of these hinges, possibly even tens of thousands, and overwhelmingly they've been these ones. These are the Blum 71B 3550. We'll get into the details of these later on. Uh, but basically this is a 35mm hinge. Cabinet uh, concealed hinges come in two sizes, 26mm and the much more common 35mm. And when I talk about sizes and sizings from now on in this video, I'm going to be referring specifically to the 35mm uh, hinge like this one. Uh, concealed hinges come in two parts, the hinge itself uh, and the hinge mounting plate. Uh, the hinge itself comprises the hinge body, the hinge boss and the hinge arm. Uh, the hinge body fits into a hole 35 millimeters wide and 13 millimeters deep and drilled into the door with its center 22 and a half millimeters from the edge. The hinge is secured to the door typically with two screws driven through the hinge boss 32 millimeters apart. The hinge mounting plate is positioned at the same height as the hinge and attached to the cabinet or carcass with two screws again at 32mm centres but set back 37mm away from the edge of the cabinet and once fixed the hinge arm simply clips onto the mounting plate. Now on this basic pressed steel or sometimes called cruciform mounting plate the fixing positions are slotted to allow for plus or minus a couple or three millimetres of vertical adjustment and the hinge arm has two screw adjusters that allow a further plus or minus two millimetres of in-out and side-to-side -side adjustment. The combination of these three adjustments on each hinge is usually plenty to allow for wonky walls or cabinetry that's been pulled slightly out of shape during the installation. And once adjusted the door can easily be unclipped for maintenance or access and then refitted later on in exactly the same position. But that's the basics for the concealed hinge, join me after the jingle when we get into a little bit more detail. Now let me start off by saying there are many many hinge manufacturers uh, all of whom make many many different types of hinges. Uh, let's throw out a handful of names. Uh, Grass, Hayfley, Hetich, Sugatoni and of course Blum. Uh, I've gone for the Blum hinges uh, because they're fairly ubiquitous. That's the only reason I'm not suggesting that they're best. It's just that that particular hinge suits me. We'll get into that a little bit more uh, in a little bit more detail in a second. Um, I know for example that if I'm stuck on site with a problem of some kind, whether that's a damaged hinge plate or a lost hinge plate or whatever. Certainly here in London I can go into pretty much any hardware store, corner shop hardware store, and get some Blum hinge mounting plates. It's a huge business, uh, concealed hinges and hinge systems. Blum themselves produce a 738 page online catalogue 125 pages of which are dedicated to concealed hinges and hinge systems. That's an awful lot of hinges and an awful lot of information to have to sift through when all you probably want to do is get a door on a cabinet or a door on a wardrobe. Uh, so I thought I'd just make this video quickly just to go take you through the, the hinges that I use because most of us to be honest are going to do one of two applications for these hinges. You're going to have an overlay door, so like a kitchen cabinet or a wardrobe door, so where the door goes fully over the cabinet itself and you've got an inset door where the door sits within the cabinet or within a frame. Uh, and these type of hinges are really really good for those sort of applications. They are fairly ubiquitous which is why I've standardized on them and I've standardized on this one in particular the uh, Blum 71B 3550 simply because it is it covers the vast majority of what I want out of a hinge. It is a 110 degree opening, so a little bit beyond uh, the 90 to give you a little bit more access. It's uh, an overlay hinge, which is what most of my doors are, so it covers the whole of the carcass by the hinge. Uh, it is a, a clip-on hinge, which is really useful. It means that then that you can build the cabinets in the workshop, pre-fit the doors and adjust them to fit nicely, then just unclip them and then just clip them on uh, on site uh, and then you've just got to tweak them a little bit 
uh, depending on what's happened during the actual installation. It's also very convenient for the, the clients as well to have doors that can be clipped off, whether that's for cleaning or access or maintenance or whatever else. And finally, it's got a built-in soft close mechanism, which is really fantastic. Uh, none of these ugly sort of soft close pistons attached to your hinge. And better still, that soft close can be switched off. There's a tiny little switch in one corner. Just flick that switch, close the door, open it again, and now it's back to a regular sprung hinge. Why would anybody want to switch off soft close? Well, sometimes if you've got a fairly large wardrobe door, for example, that door will act as a a bit of a sail catches the air as it closes so you don't necessarily want all four hinges for example on the my recent wardrobe build to have the the soft close build uh, switched on because uh, you know it could take a, a long time for that door to close everybody loves soft close provided it does actually close um, the beauty of this kind of hinge for me is that i don't have the time space energy or frankly money to stock uh, a wide range of different hinges and this one does the vast majority of what I want. Uh, occasionally I do use a, an inset door where the door sits win within the carcass or within the frame uh, and then I use the Blum 71B3750 which is the inset version of that hinge. Uh, you saw me fitting the basic hinge to the overlay door earlier on uh, using an inset hinge is slightly different and I'm going to take you through that now. Okay, okay, we've got our inset door laid out on the bench. We've got the hinge positions marked on it on tape because it's a painted door. We've transferred those across again on tape into the uh, veneered carcass of the cabinet. So we know where the hinges and the hinge plates are going to be uh, within the door and the frame. When it comes to measuring and marking out where the actual Holes need to be drilled. Well, there's loads of ways of doing this. You can do it manually, 22 and a half mil and 37 mil. It's hardly you know, rocket science. Make sure the screw holes are 32 mil apart. Uh, but there are a whole host of other ways of doing this. Bloom will sell you a thing called an eco drill. Uh, will set you back about 180, 190 quid, but it does the whole thing in in one hit, just with a with a drill, which is pretty good. Uh, I just use, you probably saw earlier, a drill press dedicated pretty much just to drilling hinges. I've got the fence marked up and for, for where it needs to be for the, for the right positions. I've actually bought but haven't used yet this little Craig kit. I wanted to give that a try. Uh, not very expensive actually, um, so we'll, we'll give that a whirl. That'll be out in a, in a future video, perhaps before too long. Uh, but if you've only got a couple to do, um, one of the things I would highly recommend uh, doing is getting this. This is a uh, made by Grass. I've mentioned this before and you may have seen it in previous videos because I use it as a simple saddle square quite a lot. And it's a, a very simple uh, hinge and hinge plate drilling guide. It just sort of sets over the uh, pencil mark and gives you a location where you can bodge a hole and then and then drill from there on. As for drilling the holes, again if you've only got a couple to do, uh, they're easy enough to do freehand. I've done loads of these freehand uh, with just a simple 35mm hinge boring bit. Uh, not an expensive one, I know some guys like to have really expensive forcing bits to do this. This is just a real basic one off Amazon or eBay. Uh, there are links down in the video description to all this stuff by the way. Uh, and that's what we're going to do now. Um, the only other thing I'd, I'd like to have is for the fixing uh, screws for the hinges. Uh, I like to have the uh, little uh, hinge bit like this one, the sort of thing where you've got a little captive sprung collar to keep the uh, the drill bit centred within the hole. That works really well. So that cheap little hinge jig, I've marked the centre positions uh, on the doors with an awl and I'm going to drill those out now with my 35mm uh, hinge bit. I've drilled loads of these freehand before but I haven't actually done it with this particular bit, so I'm going to take it slow and steady, uh, and I'll keep checking carefully because we're going 13 mil deep into a door that's only 18 mil th thick. Uh, I'll keep checking it periodically as I drill through uh, with the hinge itself, just to make sure we're, we're going in deep enough, but no deeper. It's very easy to go a little bit too deep, and that center point just sort of pimples through the other side. That, uh, that definitely ruins your day. Now moving on to the carcass, uh, we've got a measure and mark for the hinge plate 
positions and unfortunately our little cheap and cheerful hinge drilling uh, template whilst it's very good for overlay doors doesn't work unfortunately for the hinge templates on inset doors uh, because obviously you've got to allow for the thickness of the door as well and by the time you do that the little sort of rebate uh, lifts the back edge of the of the little template off the deck sadly so we can't use these now normally I would just sort of measure those out carefully 37 plus the 18 mil or whatever of the door thickness uh, but fortunately uh, my friend Steve Tomlin uh, the guy behind the block scribe and the many various uh, scribing aids uh, video out on that very soon has come up with this this is a uh, hinge uh, plate template for inset doors uh, for 18 and 22 mil thick doors uh, with those positions marked as well so I'll use that to mark those positions again just with an awl uh, just drill a little pilot hole and then we can screw the hinge plates on now one of the things I do like to change when I'm using uh, inset doors is uh, instead of just using the straightforward uh, pressed steel cruciform template with a slotted fixing holes I prefer to use uh, one of these ones with a cam adjuster in it uh, it's just because you're making slightly more fine adjustments to get that inset door fitted nicely within the frame or within the carcass uh, it's easier just to turn a screw just to crank it up or down a teensy little bit uh, they are a little bit more expensive but not a great deal and like all the other uh, hinge templates they've got an arrow on the front showing you which way they need to be fitted uh, there's not a lot of wiggle room with these so you do need to be a little bit more precise with your fittings but uh, other than that they work extremely well So with the hinges fitted onto the hinge plates, all that's left now is to use the adjustment in the hinges just to settle that door nicely within the frame. So there we are, that's how I go about fitting my concealed hinges for both overlay and inset applications. Now fairly obviously uh, I'm using unsprung hinges here because I'm typically using uh, in, uh, inset hinges, cranked hinges with a touch latch of some kind. If you're not, if you're using sprung hinges, there's nothing to stop that, nothing for the door to bear against. So you will need to put a little door stop on the inside of here, just a slim six mil little block of wood of some kind. Uh, of the same material as the inside of the carcass just for that door to bear against otherwise it'll just keep on going in uh, but that's it really uh, uh, by all means uh, use whatever hinges you like um, you know there's lots to choose from uh, feel free to trawl through the 738 pages of the Bloom catalogue to find the 125 pages that relate to hinges in particular uh, and use any of those uh, these two hinges the cranked and uncranked and in uh, sprung and unsprung variations are the main ones that I use and that I've used over the last 20 years or so uh, and they work really well lifetime warranty on bloom hinges so if there's any kind of problem they will replace them uh, they, they just work really well for me but as I say there's lots to choose from and uh, feel free to make your own choices. Uh, before we go on, I give a huge shout out and say thank you very much to all of my Patreon supporters. Without their support, without their contributions, uh, I probably st wouldn't still be going to be perfectly honest because uh, the contributions that I receive through the Patreon process really do help me to keep the lights on here and help me to keep making the videos that I make at this sort of level. Uh, uh, with this degree of regularity, uh, my Patreon supporters also get access to some exclusive content, either behind the scenes or exclusively shot videos just for them, or indeed sometimes it's just a weekly workshop vlog kind of thing, just chatting about what's been going on in the workshop during the week. Uh, if that sounds like your kind of thing, then uh, link down in the video description below to uh, support me on Patreon. Uh, patreon.com forward slash 10 minute workshop will get you straight there there are also links in the video description to all of the uh, bits and pieces that I've used in this video uh, and to other, other handy little bits and pieces that you might find useful in and around the workshop but that's it for this week thank you so much for watching I'll see you in the next one take care